Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to go through Python. I've only been learning it for a short time, but I thought I'd go through some basic stuff. I've been programming in other languages, such as C and C++, for a lot longer. Python can be used as... It, well, it, it's more of a kind of scripting language, and it can be used on um, websites and all sorts of different things. There are many, many libraries available for it, so that you can save yourself creating functions. However, today I'm just going to show you the basics of Python by implementing it into a basic calculator which add, subtract, multiply or divides two numbers. So let's get started. Firstly, if you've come to Python from any other programming language, you're likely to have come across putting a semicolon at the end of every line and being able to indent everything as much as you want. However, with Python, you don't use semicolons and any space, such as a tab or space, is, uh, affects how the program will run. So first off, we will look at the print command. This is very basic and shouldn't take long. It should be pretty self-explanatory. That's basically as simple as a print statement could be. The program simply prints hello world. When you're printing inputted text, you must put them in speech marks. This means that the program knows that it is a string as opposed to a different type of variable, which we'll come on to next. Should you want to input variables from your program, you simply put a semicolon and then say something like A, which might be your variable, and then you could put something else in, such as hello world, a random number in your variable, how are you? That will print, hello world, five, how are you? It's a bit random. So now you've had a little look at the print statement, we'll now look at variables. Variables can be uh, many different types. Um, the main three that we're gonna go through today uh, are integers, floating points, and strings. An integer is a single number, such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. A float is something that has a decimal point after it, so it could be the result of a division, so 1.25, 6.5, something like that. A string is a string of characters, so this is, as I mentioned in the print statement, this is what you put in your speech marks. So a string would be a word or a sentence, but it can include numbers as well. However, numbers in that are saved as a string will not be able to be used when using calculations such as sums. So addition, subtraction, multiplication or division. Lucky for us, Python works out variable types for us. So if we were to enter a is equal to 5 and then print the variable type it would work out that the variable 5 is an integer and that variable is an integer if we change that to a decimal point 5.5 .5, it changes to a floating point that's because it has a decimal point and it has to be saved in memory slightly differently. A string is saved as an str, short for string. So lucky for Python, it works it out all for you. In other programming languages, you often have to say something such as int a is equal to hello or float a is equal to hello just python is clever and it works out what to save it as 
So the way that you define a variable is, well, I've already shown you, you literally put the variable name, for example, a is equal to, and then the value that you want to set it to. You can have as many as you want. For example, you could have um, you could call it variable, you can call it anything you want is equal to five. And then if we copy this there, you'll notice that we now have one string and one integer. To print that variable, all we need to do is print a or print variable. That will then print out hello or five. So what if the, you want the user to be able to enter their own integer? There's a really simple command which you can do with it. As before, you have the a is equal to what you want to set it to. If you want the user to be able to enter it, you can put input and then in here you have the message you want to type. So please enter a number here. And then we can have print a. Run the program, enter a number 84 and it comes back with 84. The other thing to note is that the input will input the, the number that you type as a string. If you were to try and do some calculations with it, such as answer is equal to five times a, it wouldn't work because it's trying to times the number five, which is an integer, by a string, which is a. 5 times 5 should be 25, but it comes up with something completely different. This is because the variable type is saved as a string. As you can see there. So if we want to change that to an integer so that we can use calculations on it, simply enclose it in an int. Enter the number 5 it's class int, it manages to do 5 times integer 5 and prints the answer 25. So it's important to make sure that you're dealing with the correct variable type. Moving on to sums, these work in a very similar way to how you would type something in on a calculator. You have, um, for, uh, you actually have five different uh, main calculation things. So for example, on here we have 5 times 5. I'm just going to remove that for now. So we have 5 plus 5 is 10. 5 minus 5 is 0. 5 times 5, as we know, is 25. And then 5 divided by 5 is 1.0. If we have 5 divided by 2, you have 2.5. However, if you only want to know the number 2 part of that and ignore the decimal point, you would have a double slash. That would leave you with 2, which saves the integer, uh, sa saves the variable as an integer type. However, if you then want to know the remainder left, you would use a percentage sign. So you should have a one left. So from that, we could have, so the answer is five divided by two. The answer is going to be 5 divided by 2, but that's only going to give us the number 2. And then we will have the remainder, 5 remainder over 2. The answer is going to be equal to 2, and we'll leave 1 left over. That's actually six different calculation types, but 
that sort of just one because uh, if you had that the answer would be 2.5 but if you had whole numbers if you couldn't split them you'd have the remainder one. The next thing I'm going to introduce to you is uh, a little more complex and they're called functions. When you get really 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 big programs you might have something in which uh, like a, a um, a set of lines of code which you want to run several times or you want to move out of your main program just to tidy it up a bit. A function is simply something in which you call. An example of a function is when you call the str command, uh, a function, on an integer. So if we have integer a, uh, in integer 5, that will then convert it to a string. What this is actually doing is calling on a function called str, which is embedded into Python. To create your own function, you simply do def, as definition, function name, and then open close brackets, and then colon. And this is where the tabs come in. in. In a normal program, you could have everything on the same line, but you'd use a semicolon after everything you put in. With Python, you need to make sure that you indent everything that's meant to be indented. So in, a, in that function, you would have, say, print hello, print goodbye no semicolons once that function is printed we go back in there and we can continue with either another function or the, or the main program will start such as print start program Now what this is going to do, if I run that, is all it's going to do is print start program. Because this function up here hasn't been called. I'll separate that just to make it a little easier to view. The main program starts here. Now that doesn't mean that the first command you have to have is print. That's just because that's the first one I've decided to have. It starts when you've got no definitions up at the top over here. To call that function, I would have to call function name. Okay. Now if I run, start program, hello, goodbye. But what if I wanted to get it to print something myself? say if we have a there I want to print a not the letter a but the variable a so if I have a is equal to let's let the user input it input enter text the user will then enter some text which will be saved as a string in A, but we want to send it to this function. So we would say send it to A, but we need to remember that the function is expecting a value. So let's say that could be A, however it's recommended not to use the same name, so we could use variable instead which means that the value of a is sent to a separate variable called var, which is only used in this function. If I start that, enter the text, hello, and it will print hello back. What's happening there is we start the program and it starts by printing what I've told it to print. Then it says, enter some text and save it in variable a as a string, call the function function name, 
but send variable the, the value of data a to the function. The function is then calling it var and printing the value var. That's exactly the same as just putting print a and not having a function. However, functions can be more useful, as you'll see in the program that we will be starting with that I showed you at the start, which is a basic calculator. I hope that wasn't too confusing. It's kind of a hard thing to explain without an, um, without examples. So we'll just dive straight into the calculator and hopefully you'll be able to understand it from there. So what are we going to have in this calculator? First off, we're going to start and we're going to want two numbers. So number one, and we want the user to input it. So input, enter number one. And then we're going to have number two. Enter number two. So now we have the two numbers. The next thing we're going to want to do is ask the user what they want to do with it. So let's give them in some instructions. So one is add, two is subtract, three is multiply, and four can be divide. So now the user knows which one to type in. So to add, you would type in number one. To subtract, you would type in number two. It is possible for you to set it up so that the user just types subtract or multiply. However, I think it's quicker if you just have to type a, a single number. The other variable that we're going to want is the answer. So we'll just call that answer. And for now, we'll set that as zero. It's always a good job, a, a good idea to remember to zero any variables that you might be using later on in the program, unless you know what it's going to be to start with. The reason for that is if your computer assigns that a space in memory that has not been wiped previously, that variable could have some random value in, in which your program, if it's more complex and has a little bug, might not be expecting. So it's a good idea to zero everything to start with. Okay, so now we have our two numbers and our choice and a space ready for our answer. Now let's first make some functions for each of our choices. We have four choices, add, and we're going to want to have um, the, left, the number A and B. So we'll have two values and that's simply going to be return a value. Now what the return does is it says end the function here but return this value to your program. So return a plus b. That's the end of that function. So now we have our functions that will perform our actions. Then we've got to work out what the user has entered or work out what the user wants to do. So we'll introduce a new statement which is called an if statement. The if statement does exactly what it says on the tin and if something is true it goes along and does it. It also have a, has a second bit called else or else if. Now the else statement is simply if the if isn't true do the else regardless of what anything else is. 
what you can have is if something is true then generally you'd have an if else uh, sorry an else if and then an else if that value is false if that value is false do that however if that value is false but that one is true ignore that one so what we're going to have is if choice is double equals a single equals sets a value to something a double equals checks if it's the same value as what you're expecting so if choice is double equal to one but remember that the input command will input the one as a string so we would have to say if it is equal to the string one the other thing we could do is put an int there and then it will convert the string which the input function gives us convert it to an integer and then we can say if the choice is equal to number one do this in which case print the value add and we'd want to send it number one and num2 else if so if it's not equal to one but it is equal to two print subtract function make sure you get your capitals right I never do subtract and send the function the number one and the number two and that's it done but what if the user enters 55 currently the program will just end and that will be it if we enter an else here so if it's not one if it's not two if it's not three if it's not four then if it's anything else print error check your choice that is the program complete let's check that it works number one let's say five number two let's say two would we like to add subtract multiply or divide let's start with add you know why that is don't you what have I forgotten I have forgotten to put that as an int it's reading it as a string it's reading the two numbers as a string they're not being converted to an integer so it's simply putting the two together five and two now it should work fine five and two added together gives us seven run it again five and two subtracted gives us three five and two multiplied gives us ten five and two divided gives us 2.5 and if we put five and two and then five which isn't an option we've been given error check your choice so that's a very simple calculator program. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want doing. If this video gets lots of views, I'll perhaps make another one on some more advanced programming. If there's any other languages you'd like me to look at, please let me know.